I mentioned to you last thing about yesterday, I think. Last thing is I mentioned to you yesterday if I say, hey, I'm going to pause for dramatic effect, um, it might be something that's important, and we're going to start off with that, right? And that's the list of virtual machine files or the files that make up a virtual machine. Now, this is not something you want to print off and make poster size and laminate and hang up in your office, but you do need to know this set of files. This is something that if you've been using VMware for uh, quite some time, you're familiar with these file names, right? Uh, but this is something that happens inside of data centers all day, right? Hey, where's this? Where, how big is that VMDK file? Where's the VMX file, right? So you need to be familiar with these. Now, your virtual machine or your virtual machines that you have may or may not have all of these files. They are going to have certain files. Every virtual machine is going to have certain files but I'm going to point out a couple that, of these file names that may or may not um, be a part of your virtual machine, right? So the virtual machine files always start with a virtual machine name. So if you name it Bob, do I have any Bobs? No Bobs. Roberts? No, okay. Because Bob is my fictional person, right? So let's say I name my virtual machine Bob. Every file a name will start with Bob dot and then an extension. And the very first one that we want to talk about is the VMX file, the configuration file. That's this. Every virtual machine will have a VMX file. And the configuration file describes uh, the virtual machine, uh, the hardware, the operating system, the MAC address, the IP address. It has all that information in the VMX file. Now this is a flat file. What do I mean by flat? I mean that you could browse out to the data store and find this VMX file and open it up with WordPad, Notepad, whatever word processing uh, application that you have and open it up and view it. And not only view it, you can modify it. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that you go in and modify the VMX file, but there are certain times that you need to go in and modify. Uh, the VMX file or modify the configuration. I'm going to give you one example and I'm not going to go into great detail, right? Uh, but, but you can Google it if you want. Uh, yesterday, Ken talked about your VPOD architecture, right? So running on bare metal on hardware, actual hardware is ESXi 6. On top of that are your VPODs. Your ESXi host that you're actually running are virtual machines. Now, Disclaimer, that is 100% not, let me write that down, not supported in production environments, but it works really well for labs, right? Now, in order to do nested ESXi servers, you have to go in and flip a bit in the configuration file. So when the lab support team first rolled these uh, VPods out, they went in and um, modified the VMX file, changed a couple of settings in there, Google it, Google nested ESXi host. They went in and flipped a bit in the VMX file and then therefore they were able to um, uh, create these nested ESXi hosts, which work really, really, really well in labs, right? The other files uh, that get created, or some of the other files, are the swap files, there are two. There's a vswap file, and a vmx.vswap file. Now these files are dynamic files, meaning they get created when we power the virtual machine on, and they go away when we power the virtual machine off. These are VMware's get out of jail free card, meaning that if there's a lot of contention for memory resources on that ESXi host, the VM kernel has to have the ability to swap out the entire memory space of that virtual machine, right? So as an example, if I have a virtual machine that I assign when I build it has two gig of memory assigned to it, when I power that virtual machine on, right, the swap file gets created or the vswap file gets created and it's going to be two gig in size. Meaning that if we have a lot of memory contention, the VM kernel can swap out that entire two gig of memory assigned to that to the swap file. Now performance will be noticeably slow, you've overcommitted the memory too much, you've got another issue, right? But the vswap file is there uh, during times of contention. There's also this vmx.vswap file. That's for memory overhead. Every virtual machine has memory overhead. 
right? And that's gonna vary based upon the configuration, the size of the VM, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I can't tell you a specific amount of overhead that each virtual machine has. It's going to vary, but that swap file gets created as well. There's also an NVRAM file for the BIOS of, a com of uh, the virtual machine, several log files, and then we have a VMTX, which is not a virtual machine file. It's actually um, the extension for a template, right? A template is nothing more than a virtual machine that can never be powered on. I can deploy virtual machines from that. I can convert it to a virtual machine. But if I see the extension VMTX, I know that we flipped a bit, right? And that virtual machine is now a template, right? So that's the VMTX extension. Um, an RDM, right? A raw device mapping. This is where we give a virtual machine access to a raw LUN, right? A raw disk. It shows up in the virtual machine as an actual disk drive, right? And, and we'll talk about specific reasons we would want to do that, but one of them might be that we're managing the backend uh, storage system and we need to be able to uh, uh, manipulate that, that raw disk, right? That, that would be one example. Now I'm going to skip down to the bottom and depending upon if you have created snapshots for your virtual machine, right? A snapshot is the ability to uh, revert back to a previous state. We'll talk about snapshots coming up. If you have not created a, or taken snapshots of your virtual machines, those files will not be present, nor will the suspend state file, right? If you suspend the virtual machine, you get a suspend file, right? So here are these files for snapshots, the VMSD file, the VMS, or yeah, the VMSN file, and then a delta.vmdk file, right? So that takes us back up to these two files. Now, I, I'm not a conspiracy theory person, but I do think that this is really kind of confusing, um, and it's kind of a conspiracy, right? So... I do it, you probably do it, um, all your coworkers probably do it, VMware Support does it, uh, VMware Education does it, pretty much everybody uh, calls the disk file a VMDK file, right? We always hear this, you know, how big is that VMDK file? How big do you need me to make that VMDK file? When in reality, the VMDK file is nothing more than a descriptor file. Right? The, the actual VMDK file is a descriptor file. It describes the disk, the provisioning, the sectors, the tracks. It describes the disk. Right? The actual pre-allocated space where we write data to is actually the dash flat dot VMDK. Right? So if I create a virtual machine and I say uh, I'm going to give it a 10 gig disk, it's going to have a VMDK file that describes that disk and then that pre-allocated space where I'm going to put all the files, the operating system files, uh, pictures, word processing documents, spreadsheets, whatever, are going to go in the dash flat dot VMDK, right? Now, we, being trained IT professionals, we're efficient, not lazy. So what we do is when we say VMDK file, we drop the dash flat dot VMDK, but we're actually referring to the dash flat dot VMDK when we say VMDK, right? Now, I mentioned conspiracy theory. Here's what's funny about this. If I create a virtual machine and I give it 10 gig disk and I browse out to the data store that I just created it on and I look, I, I look at the files. So I find the data store, I open it up. Here's all the files, the VMX file, the NVRAM file, um, so on. Depending upon what view I'm in, I may see just a VMDK file and it will show up as 10 gig. And you're gonna say, well, Vince, you just said that's a descriptor file. Are you saying the descriptor file is the same size as the actual disk? No, they don't show you the actual VMDK file. What they're showing you visually is that pre-allocated space. They're actually showing you the dash flat dot VMDK file. Now, that same data store and that same virtual machine, if I go out into, say, the storage view, right? We have four main views, host and clusters, templates, or virtual machines and templates, storage and networking. If I go out and look at that same data store with the same virtual machine uh, in the storage views, guess what I'm going to see? I'm going to see the dash flat dot VMDK file, which is the 10 gig in size. And then I'm also going to see the descriptor file, the VMDK file. 
right? So I, I, I know that I kind of made a big deal out of that, but I, you do need to understand there are two different files. A VMDK file is a descriptor file and the dash flat, which is that pre-allocated space. So there is a difference between the two. 